this is actually a project I'm doing and I'm gifting to my friend. I promised I was going to make something custom for her. What's up KDWats and welcome back to another sewing vlog. This video is going to be for this mini skirt that has two front slits, sort of like where your legs are on the front. You can decide to have one slit or both like I have done. I just wanted to show you guys how to create this skirt and it is fully lined so you know you have coverage even if you work with like a thinner fabric. I share how to create the sewing patterns and how to cut and stitch it all together. So hopefully you guys are able to follow through and recreate this project for yourself if you wanted to okay now if you're ready i am let's get into this video to create the sewing patterns i measured around my friend's waistline her hip decided on how long she wanted the skirt to be and as how tight or fitted she wanted it around the hemline once we had those measurements taken down we decided on fabrics we decided to work with this beautiful green blue and sort of teal ankara print i only use a meter of this fabric because of the length of the skirt you don't need a lot of fabric for the skirt design i also grabbed some simple black lining because the fabric does have black lines in it and i only ended up using about a meter of the lining i also have here a short black invisible zip to sit on the center back of the skirt that's how you kind of get in and out of the garment once we have those out of the way i'm going to be creating the front skirt pattern i always like to start from the front and work my way backwards and the first thing i'm doing here is i'm marking the desired skirt length the skirt is more on the mini side so we worked with about 19 inches you can make yours longer or shorter if you want and once i had that marked in place i'm just going in here to square across the waistline which is the top line and then the hemline which is this bottom line i am drawing in here once i have these lines marked in place the next thing i'm doing is i'm going to be marking a quarter of the waist measurements plus one inch for the waist dart once i have that in place i'm going in to mark away the dart halfway through this measurement and the dart width itself is one inch so half an inch on both sides midway through now for the dart length itself on the front i tend to work with 4.5 to 5 inches for this particular skirt i use 4.5 inches the difference isn't much from 5 inch but because of where she wanted the skirt to sit on her body we decided on 4.5 inches waist dart for the front now once i had that sorted and out of the way i'm going in here to mark the vertical distance from the waist down to the hip which is about 10 inches i square that point across because along that line which is the hip line i'm going to be marking a quarter of the hip measurement you can add ease at this point if your fabric really doesn't have any stretch i added about a quarter inch ease so she's able to sit and stand when she has this skirt on Along the hemline, I'm also marking a quarter of the around hem measurement. It's a pencil shape, so it kind of tapers in towards the hem or the bottom of the skirt. Once I have those side points marked in place, I'm just going in to draw the side seam, which connects the waistline to the hip and the hemline like so. Next up, I'm dividing the front into two panels by just extending that middle dart line downwards. So I have the front skirt as panel one and panel two. The middle panel would be cut on a fold. So we have one piece there and then you have your two side seams. And from having those side seams, that's how you'll be able to add the slit that the skirt has on the front. After that, I went in to trace off the two panels or the two pattern pieces that the front skirt has. The panel one, which is this piece here, and then the panel two, which is a side piece. You need to cut two pieces of panel two, one for the left and one for the right. I'm going to be using the same pattern for my lining as well. I'll just make the lining panel shorter compared to the main skirt. Once I have the front pieces cut and out of the way, I'm going to be working on the back. And for the back, I'm just going to be tracing off the shape of the front skirt plan onto a separate piece of paper. So that way I'm able to cut out that piece of paper as a separate pattern piece. So I'm tracing off the waistline, the side seam, the hemline, transferring the notches for the hip line, especially because that would help me when I'm joining everything together. But on the center back edge, I'm just shaping in the top end of the waist. I'm shaping it in by about a centimeter or half an inch. And that way the skirt really sits nice and snug around the waist. This part is optional, but you can just 
tape it in or shape it in if you want to now along that center back edge i'm adding a one centimeter or half an inch seam allowance that way i'm able to have a little bit of measurement to add my zip i'm adding a two centimeter hem allowance and because of the shape of the side seam i'm pointing the hemline outwards like this because the skirt tapers in towards the hem so you want the seam allowance to go out so when you fold it back up it matches or it meets the side seam now once i'm done adding all of that i'm going to be drawing in the back waist that which is one inch shorter compared to the front and that's to you know accommodate the curve the hips and the bum that is typically on the back uh when you wear fitted garments like these i'm just going in here to add my annotations green line and notches and cut out that pattern so i have a separate pattern piece for my back skirt now that i have all of my pattern pieces in place this is what they look like and i created the patterns in such a way that i'm going to use the same pattern for the main skirt and the lining the main difference with the lining is that the lining is going to be right up until the hemline edge and then the main skirt would have the extra seam allowance so there's a little bit of room there once i had all of my patterns pinned down onto my fabric obeying the green line dimensions and cut everything in the same direction i also tried to play around with the placement of the prints that the fabric had so i kind of tried to make the print connect on the front especially the yellow flower and the tail flower so it just looks really cool once i had those pinned in place i'm going in here to cut out the skirt pieces here i'm cutting out the main back i'm going to cut a pair of the back piece so one is on the left and one is on the right i'm going to cut out all of the main skirt pieces cut out the lining then don't forget to cut your notches especially along the waistline where your dart is along the hip point and more importantly for this front panel where you're connecting panel one to two you can add multiple notches if you think it will make your work easier for you if you're in the market for a sewing course that covers a foundation sewing and pattern making you need to check out the kim dave course this is a virtual learning experience that allows you to learn at your own pace from anywhere in the world i'm going to leave a link down below so you can check it out and join the community of learners globally who are taking their sewing skill to the next level these are all of the pieces for the skirt i have my front pieces which i have the main middle piece as one i have two pieces for the side and then i have uh, two pieces or a pair for the back i also have my lining pieces here i've cut the notches so when i'm connecting pieces together i kind of don't have to overthink whether the pieces are actually matching if one is bigger than the other because i cut all of these from like a sewing pattern or a similar sewing pattern now onto actually sewing everything together, I'm going to be starting off by pinning together the front panels in place. So I'm going to pin up until the point that I want my slit to start. So my slit is roughly four inches above the hemline here. You can make yours, you know, a little bit more sexy, higher up the leg if you want. But I just wanted something that when she wore the skirt, she wouldn't have to wear tight or feel conscious when she would sit down. So it's kind of like a good length and you see the slit, but you can make yours as high or as low as you are comfortable with or what your client is comfortable with. So I'm going to just mark and indicate where I want to sew from the waist down to and leave the bottom edge of that front seam open. So that way I have that slit showing and in place. So I'm going to take this to my machine and I'm sewing on a one centimeter seam allowance because that's what I added on my sewing pattern. Remember to do my back stitch at the beginning and at the end of my seam. I'm going to also go in to work on my back skirt, especially stitching up those darts on the waistline. So I'm transferring the dart using a pin from the paper onto the fabric. Then I'm going to be marking the dart point using a chalk. This is a type of chalk that sort of like washes off with water, so it's not the permanent type. Once I have those points marked in place, I'm going to go in to pin the dart in. So this is the wrong side of the fabric. I'm just pinning the dart away matching it to the point where i marked with the chalk i like to add two to three pins along my dots i don't like taking chances so i know exactly what i am sewing away 
along the waistline through the dot. Once I have that pinned in place, I'm going to take this to my machine and I'm going to be sewing up the dots on the back of the skirt. Once I have all of that stitched and pressed away, I am going to be setting the front of the skirt aside to focus on the back. Recently, I've been fixing my zipper, especially if it's like two separate back panels. I actually like to fix my zip like this before joining the side seams if it has like a side seam on the side connecting to the front. So with the center back open like this, especially if it's an invisible zip, I would open up the zip pin the zip into the open center back seam i can i also like to do this for a side seam as well i found that it's just a little bit easier to actually fix in invisible zips this way so have that bottom edge open and then you take this to the machine and i'm sewing using a very narrow zip footer so it allows me to really get very close to the zip teeth and i'm unfolding the zipper slowly as i'm stitching down i'm going to stitch down this side once i'm done with this side i'm going to turn to the other side of the zipper the other side of the skirt along that center back edge and i'm going to sew from that down side so upward so that way i have both sides of the zip tape stitched into the center back of the skirt once i have that stitched check that everything works then i'm going to sew up that bottom seam on the center back that i left open and i sew as close as possible to the very point where i stopped stitching my zip once i did that i went in to press my seam open before connecting the side seams together of my front to my back so i have like a whole skirt ready to try on or to fit if that's the case so now i'm just going in here to pin the side seams in place this one i'm not leaving any opening on the side because the lining is going to help me achieve that and once i'm done stitching up the side seam this is what the skirt is looking like it's looking really good really tidy and nice i'm going to set that aside and essentially join the lining panels in the same format so Sew up the front panels, leaving the bottom edge open. Sew up the back dots, join the side seams, but leave the center back open. Spot my Kim Dave label on the back as well. I'm going to start doing that henceforth so you guys would see. <laughs> just for the fun of it but once i have the lining in place i made sure to leave an opening on the side because that's how i'm going to turn the skirt inside out now i'm going to take this lining and i'm going to be joining it right sides together to the center back edge and the waistline of my skirt so this i like to always pin especially around the points like the side seam where you want the seams to match so i'm pinning side seam to side seam, center front to center front, seam points to seam points, right sides together of the lining to the main skirt. And I'm going to be sewing in the direction of starting from either side of the center back edge, sewing up the center back edge, turn the garment along the waistline and then sew the waistline until you arrive at the other side and then down the other center back edge. Sewing on a one centimeter seam allowance, I'm just making my way to this other side of the center back edge where the zip tape is and I'm sewing downwards till I arrive as close as possible to the end of the zip. Once I am done sewing all of that, I'm going to go in and sew the bottom center back seam open like we did for the main skirt so that that way on the inside you don't see any raw edge or you don't see where the zip stops where it ends you just see like a nice clean finish on the inside of the skirt as well so this is what it's looking like so far i gave my piece a nice press along the waistline it is optional you could go in and top stitch the lining to the seam allowance on that top edge just to tuck everything away nice and neatly you can also give it a nice press just to relax all of the stitching in place the second to last thing we're going to be doing is we're going to be joining the hemlines together and I always like to fold both hemlines inwards like this, especially like a key point like center back to center back or side seam to side seam and turn the skirt inside out and put right sides together of the hemline of the, the lining to the main skirt because the idea is to sew the entire hemline, turn the skirt inside out and you don't have like a raw edge showing on the bottom 
of the skirt once i had everything pinned in place i'm going to take this to my machine and start from either the center back or the side seam and i'm going to be sewing the hemline of the skirt together once i get to where the splits are the trick is to turn the piece so you leave your needle in lift your footer and then you sew upwards like you are sewing a side seam you sew upwards like this and then when you get to the end of the split you want to sew as close as possible to the seam you leave your needle in you lift your footer and then you turn to the other side of the split so that way when you turn this piece inside out you would have a nice corner at the bottom of both ends of the split you have a nice finished edge along the split as well is this splits or slits let me know in the comment section down below i think i don't know which one is right i call them slits but some people call them splits please let me know so we, we correct ourselves and learn together but essentially i'm going to repeat the same thing for the left and the right slit let's just call it that for now and then i'm going to work my way to the bottom of the sides all the way back to the center back of the skirt once i have that stitched away and in place because we left that opening on the side seam of the lining that's how you actually be able to turn the piece inside out this was a trick i learned from one of my internships she was like if you want to have a nice finished hemline on tailored pants tailored skirts the lining is is the plug you have to learn how to turn things inside out leave an opening in your seam allowance and even with like tailored sleeves as well that's something you could consider so once you have the entire hemline stitched in place you would then use the lining as a way to turn the piece inside out and then close the lining opening later on so once i was done doing that i'm just going in here to turn my piece inside out and i also tried to trim down the corners for the front um, slits so we had like a nice sharp corner pulled out all of the bottom edges so it was as nice and as neat as possible i also trimmed in around the points where i turned the slits so the openings could lay nice and flat and the last part of finishing this project is closing off that side hole or that side opening that allowed us to turn this piece inside out. So I'm just pinning it all together in place so I have like a nicely folded away side seam. And I'm going to take this in my machine and I'm just going to be sewing as close as possible to the edge. You can also hand tack this if you don't want to sew this on your machine or you're not very confident in doing an edge stitch. That's another option I can consider. Just tack it down by hand turn your piece inside out and give it a nice press. So this is the skirt all done. This is actually a project I'm doing and I'm gifting to my friend Amy K. I promised I was going to make something custom for her. So I just decided to film it and share it with you guys on YouTube as well. But once this is all done, I'm going to be wrapping it and sending it off to her. She would probably get this skirt before the tutorial goes up. So if there are any clips of her wearing the skirt, any pictures, I would add into this video as well. So you see what it actually looks on her. We are the same body shape. She's just taller than me. Like in terms of like waist hips, we literally have like very similar measurements. That's why I was able to make this skirt and just like fit it on me. Then I'm going to be sending it off to her. I really like how it turned out. Uh, if I was making this for myself, I'd probably make this a lot shorter and a lot more fitted. But if you follow through with your measurements or that of your clients, you probably get an outcome truer to the fit of the measurements that you work with. I hope that made sense. If you did enjoy this video, do give it a thumbs up. If you recreate this, please tag me on social media at Kim Dave Designs. I would love to see your recreations as well. And until my next video, have a good morning, afternoon, and evening wherever you are. Bye.